Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. We acknowledge the Turrbal and Yagrapal people, the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather today. They are stewards on behalf of the Almighty Creator. We also pay our respects to the elders, past, present, and emerging. And we extend that respect to all Torres Strait Islander and Aboriginal people who join us. We endeavour to walk alongside you towards justice. Christ is risen, alleluia. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed, indeed. Alleluia. alleluia. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, says the Lord, and let the one who believes in me drink, for out of your heart shall flow rivers of living water. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of truth comes to convict of sin of righteousness and of judgment. Let us then open our hearts and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours.
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, at the Feast of Pentecost, you sent your Holy Spirit to the disciples, filling them with joy and boldness to preach the gospel. Empower us with that same Spirit to witness to your redeeming love and to draw all people to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. First reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of the violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and of tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. 
Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Patience, maids, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Papalifia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Christians and Arabs, in our own languages, uh, we hear them speaking about God's deed of power. All we are amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, Peter standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, all of who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say indeed. These are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs of the earth, below blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord, great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hear the word of the Lord.
second reading, a reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you are pagans, you are enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be crossed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are very varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discernment of spirits to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the spirit, we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. Hear the, Lord of, the word of the Lord.
Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. be with you. And also with you. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father had sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If you were expecting red balloons and red streamers and serried ranks of pinwheels gaffer taped to the pews to catch the wind of the Spirit, sorry. It might have been nice to have had this windy surprise of red. And great though this Feast of Pentecost is, we should not be expecting a surprise when we pray for the coming of the Spirit. She was here before today, and she'll be here tomorrow. The Holy Spirit is delightfully and divinely old hat. And at first glance, the Gospel appears to create a picture of surprise. Here we are reading the final chapter of St. John's Gospel, if you put aside the gloss chapter which follows. The previous chapter accounted for Jesus' crucifixion and burial. The verses in between accounted for the empty tomb and our Lord's appearance to St. Mary Magdalene. So we read of the disciples huddling together having seen the empty tomb and having heard the women's incredible stories, then Jesus appears, and no sooner does he say, peace, than he scarily breathes the Holy Spirit on them. But none of this is a surprise. Early in St. John's Gospel, Jesus spoke with Nicodemus and spoke of his being lifted up and the eternal life which flowed from that. Following his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, Jesus said that when he was lifted up from the earth, he would draw all people to himself. There was much foretelling of the resurrection, but it was no surprise. And neither was the coming of the Holy Spirit. During the Last Supper, Jesus said he would ask the Father to send another advocate to be with us forever. 
Mind you, the disciples didn't seem to have a great deal of confidence about anything which was said about the events from Gethsemane onwards. The day of Pentecost is not the first appearance of the Holy Spirit. The disciples were not called until after Jesus' baptism, according to each of the Synoptic Gospels. They might not have witnessed the Spirit descending on Him as He rose from the waters if they weren't bystanders. It was also the Spirit which drove Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. And the Spirit was active in the Gospel stories right from the beginning, even at Mary's conception. And let's not forget that mentions of the Spirit are peppered throughout the Hebrew Bible. The word for Spirit in Hebrew is ruah, which means breath. In the first story of creation, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the deep, while a wind or a breath or a spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. The spirit is a prominent actor in the foundational story of Jesus' Bible. And before the unfortunate incident of the golden calf, the Lord commissioned Bezalel to construct a tent of meeting, the Ark of the Covenant and the Mercy Seat. It says he was a man of ability, intelligence and knowledge in every kind of craft and had been filled with the Divine Spirit. When Joshua was appointed as Moses' successor, the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay your hand on him. One of Job's antagonists, Elihu, son of Barachel, rebukes Job and tells him, The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. In describing God's omnipresence, the psalmist sings, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? The prophet Nehemiah understands the spirit as a teacher. And the prophet Micah, in contrast with false prophets, writes, I am filled with power with the Spirit of the Lord and with justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. And that's just a grab bag in no particular order. The Holy Spirit was not a surprise at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit did not start getting her act together at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit has been active from the beginning so what's so special about Pentecost then? Well, I suggest it's not so much a surprised or supposed surprise arrival of the Holy Spirit, but what the Spirit did for the disciples. Before the Spirit, they were sitting huddled in the house in fear for their lives and without hope. After the Spirit... They went out among the multicultural gathering at the festival in Jerusalem and proclaimed to each of them in their own language. Before the Spirit, they felt abandoned by God. After the Spirit, they had the courage in the hope of Joel's prophecy which Peter recited in Acts. And the Holy Spirit event at Pentecost was not a fix-all. It was an event of encouragement and hope to keep going. We often refer to the Holy Spirit as the comforter, and it's probably a, a, a corruption of the Latin conforte, which means with strength. So not the Holy Spirit, the cushy beanbag, but the Holy Spirit the strengthener. She teaches and reminds, yet the world can find it hard to swallow. 
faced with that, we are encouraged, enlivened, strengthened by the Spirit to be disciples of Christ. Think of the fruits of the Spirit, which St. Paul writes to the Galatians, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In a world where there is delight in grinding people down by the use of power, the Spirit strengthens us to bring love. In a world where there is despair through being homeless or being denied refuge, the Spirit strengthens us to bring God's hope and joy. In a world where there is conflict between nations, between races, between communities, the Spirit, the Spirit strengthens us to bring God's peace, and so on, for kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The Holy Spirit didn't debut at the first Pentecost, nor makes an annual visit at each subsequent Pentecost. We shouldn't expect a surprise gift of the Spirit today as a kind of anniversary celebration. We've all had the abiding gift of the Spirit at our baptism and through our baptism. We see the work of the Spirit in the history of God's people. We see the work of the Spirit in Jesus' ministry and in the early church. And we see and are energized by the work of the Spirit today to embolden and strengthen us to proclaim Christ raised from the dead. Christ is risen, alleluia. He, he is, is risen indeed, indeed. alleluia. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified. Thank you, Jesus. He descended from the dead. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the Church and for the world, and thank God for God's goodness. The response to Lord come bless us is the response to Lord come bless us is and fill us with your spirit. Lord come to bless us and fill and us, fill us with, with your, your spirit. spirit. We pray that the God of mercy who sent the Holy Spirit 
upon Christ at the River Jordan and upon the disciples in the upper room will make us one in heart and mind as we offer intersections. Generous God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that we may be strengthened to serve you better. Lord, come to bless us. And fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to make us wise to understand your will. Come, Lord, come to bless us. And fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the peace of the Holy Spirit. We ask you to keep us confident in your love wherever you call us. Lord, come to bless us. And fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the healing of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to bring reconciliation and wholeness where there is division, sickness, and sorrow, especially in this nation week of reconciliation. We pray that your spirit will lead us to strive for a just, equitable, and reconciled country. Lord, come to bless us. And fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We ask you to equip us for the work which you have given us. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the fruits of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to reveal in our lives the love of Jesus. Lord, come to bless us. And fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the breath of the Holy Spirit, given us by the risen Lord. We ask you to keep the whole church living and departed in the joy of eternal life. Lord, come to bless us. And fill us with your spirit. In the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, we give thanks for the lives of our departed sisters and brothers of this parish and those whom we hold dear in our hearts. And at the anniversaries of their death, among them, Claude Armstrong, Cottrell Barrett, Douglas Macaulay, Ronald McIver, Vera Lappin, Mary Perkins, Nancy Service, William Francis, David Pentland, Anthony Brooks, Lillian Barrett, John Wrynn, Donald Williams, and Susan Gordon. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may by your grace receive through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is written indeed, alleluia. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia, the peace of the risen and ascended Lord be always with you. And also and with you. you. Alleluia. Peace, peace with, with you, Father. Rodney. Peace with you, Father. Peace with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Pray that you accept this sacrifice, which we offer to you with humble and contrite hearts. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. O oh, glory and honor be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin, and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Today we give you thanks that in fulfillment of your promise, you pour forth your Spirit upon us, filling us with gifts and leading us into all truth. You give us power to proclaim your gospel to all nations, and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Holy God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that we who eat and drink them, in obedience to our Saviour Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, may be partakers of his body and blood, and be made one with him and with each other in peace and in love. On the night he was handed over, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. As we eat and drink this holy sacrament, renew us by your Spirit, that we may be united in the body of your Son and serve you as a royal priesthood in the joy of your eternal kingdom. Receive our praises, Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you in songs of never-ending praise. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As this broken bread was once many grains which have been gathered together and made one bread, so may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only you say the word and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Giver of life and love, we thank you that in this heavenly banquet you invigorate and renew us. Living in the unity of the Spirit, may we boldly use your gifts to continue your work in the world. Living God, make us apostles of the risen Christ. Give us joyful hearts, words of hope, and grace to recognize the Lord Jesus when he meets us, wherever we are on the road. Would you please make yourself comfortable for some brief notices? A very good morning and welcome to you. I do hope that you'll uh, join us for um, morning tea in the hall afterwards. So after you leave the main door, it's just to your left and the hall is right next door to us here. Please do come along to that. Uh, Trinity Tidings has been sent out. If you've not received a copy, there's some printed copies at the rear of the church. Please do take one if you prefer to read it with a feel of paper between your fingers. And also I commend to you to take a look at the uh, National Reconciliation uh, website. Uh, this is uh, the uh, well, National Reconciliation Week started yesterday and uh, the uh, issues and importance of reconciliation are very much part of the national conversation uh, in both the political and the social spheres. So I do encourage you to take a look at that and to contemplate on and to enact ways in which we can achieve reconciliation in tangible means um, with our First Nations sisters and brothers. If you're interested in the parish day retreat coming up in July, please do let me know. Uh, a couple of our next door parishes are um, hoping to come along with us, so hopefully that will be a, a good gathering and um, a, a nice time of reflection for uh, all of us. And uh, next week, one Mass only at 9am for Trinity Sunday, one Mass only at 9am. Anything I say three times is true, one Mass only at 9am. And I do hope to see you there. If you've not signed up, would you please do so, uh, ideally today, uh, because Derek needs to know how many leviathans to capture from the ocean to make the canapes, and Philip needs to know how many goats to slaughter. So uh, we've got a little bit of preparation to do, but a great menu uh, lined up for today. There'll be alternatives to leviathans and goats, by the way, so don't feel put <laughs> off by, by those options. Um, so do please um, sign up, and I do hope to see you there at um, our great... Um, a celebration of the parish's feast of title. Would you please stand as you are able for the missional hymn. May the Spirit, who hovered over the waters when the world was created, breathe into you the life she gives. Amen. Amen. May the Spirit, who overshadowed the Virgin when the Eternal Son came among us, make you joyful in the service of the Lord. 
Amen. May the Spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with love for the risen Christ. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Christ has gone up on high. God raised Christ from the dead. God put all things in subjection beneath his feet. We died, and our life lies hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, Christ has gone up on high. Hallelujah. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.